What's up guys, Zach from Wire Customs, and today we are working on the 67 Mustang Fastback and we're replacing the Fender apron. So these are very commonly rusted out on Mustangs. Um, I've done dozens and dozens and dozens of these. So these are really simple repair. Um, if you're watching this video because you're worried about your car, just order the part. I got this for about 35 bucks. Um, it's gonna fit actually pretty good. And it's gonna get rid of that rust that's always right underneath the battery on your Mustang. Now I've done, now I've done these on 64 and a half to 68 Mustangs. Um, I've never done it on 69. 64 to 68, I can guarantee you that this is simple. It's all exactly like this. Um, someone in the comment section let me know if a 69 uh, front apron is similar to this or not. But let's get into this repair. So if you enjoy my videos and you want to support my small business, you can do it by buying one of our t-shirts. It says Wired Customs on the front and on the back it has our logo, the Terminator, the T800, it's wired up to the car, kind of like supercharging the car. So obviously the first thing you want to do is take apart the front part of the car. Um, we need to get to a lot of welds on the inside, on the outside, on the front, um, so you need a lot of accessibility. Uh, I have the hood off, I got the fender off. For me, I have the motor out, obviously. Um, that's going to make it a lot easier, but if your motor's in, um, I've done it both ways. It's not that much harder. And what I'm going to do right now is take these little shock guards off because these bolt holes are actually going through our piece that's going to be removed. And now that I have that off, I want to clean up all the edges around the piece that we're going to take out and find all the spot welds. I'm going to do that by getting my little angle grinder and I have a 36 grit um, sandpaper on it. And when I grind it off, all the lows, um, which I'll show you, uh, all the lows are going to be spot welds. So we're going to need to cut all of those out. Okay, so here on my project, this is what finding the spot welds look like. So we can see right here, when I hit it with the grinder, we have these low spots. Uh, these low spots, you'll fill them with your finger, there'll be like little divots in there. Those are the spot welds. The more easy to see ones are these ones right here on top of the apron. And this one right here on the front. It's easy to see that one. If yours is pretty rusty, you're going to have ones that are hard to see. Here's an example of ones that are hard to see. So if you can't see yours at all, when we go to separate our piece that we're replacing, um, you'll start to find them then, and I'll show you at that point in time what that looks like and how to how to catch a spot weld that you missed. Okay, so before we start cutting into it, we need to make a couple measurements. So we go back together, we make sure that the radiator support and the apron is exactly where it was before we took it out. Now there's not an exact spot you need to measure it from, but you need to make sure you measure it from the same spot uh, at the beginning and the same spot when it's going back together. I'm going to go off of the little lap weld right here, off the cow, and to the end. And I'm going to write my measurement on the radiator support since that's staying. And I'm not going to tell you what mine is because these Mustangs weren't perfect from factory. So if I tell you what my measurement is, it might be different from yours. So this is how I move the spot welds. I'm gonna use an eighth inch drill bit. Um, I'm gonna drill pilot holes into the spot weld. Then I'm gonna go right into cutting it with a spot weld cutter. Here's kind of what that looks like. And when I'm doing it, I'm gonna be spraying the bit the whole time with my little water mixture. Um, this mixture, I put a little Fabuloso in it so it smells good. Um, I don't use oil when I'm drilling. I use water with a little bit of Fabuloso because I like the smell. Um, because I'm not just a fabricator, I'm also a painter. Uh, I paint here too. So spraying anything with oil, like on bare sheet metal or anything I'm going to have to paint later, is a nightmare to a painter. Um, it's going to be in the cracks, crevices, all that bad stuff. It's really hard to get out. It can really, really screw up your paint job. Um, even with a rattle can, screw up the rattle can paint job. So. Drill my pilot hole for the spot weld cutter. Okay, now that I got my pilot holes, I'm gonna take my spot weld cutter and it, it's gonna go right in my pilot hole. 
and I'm gonna spray it the whole time that I'm drilling because uh, I like to drill mine fast. I don't like to take it slow, so. I'm keeping the radiator support. I'm drilling the holes through the radiator support so I don't have to drill the holes through our new piece later. Uh, I'm gonna weld, use a, um, I'm gonna spot weld right through the holes that we create, so don't worry about making a big hole on a piece that you're keeping. So that's basically the just of cutting out all your spot weld holes. I'm gonna cut all of these out, then I'm gonna explain the next process after I have them all cut. So here's my pilot hole in all of the locations. Uh, this is what you should be looking for when looking for all your spot welds all the way down here, all the way across the bottom. Then obviously the top going down, then when it comes over, then back down some more here. So now that I got all my pilot holes in my spot welds, I'm going to start cutting them out with my spot weld cutter. And I'm going to weld the, the new piece back in with spot welds, so I'm not going to do anything twice. I don't want to drill anything twice. So I'm going to cut it from out here. There's going to be holes all the way down out here, so when this piece is removed, I can spot weld the new piece in from out here without having to drill a hole on this old piece, without having to drill a hole on the new piece. Um, it wastes a bunch of time. Now obviously down here we're into 14 gauge, so I'm not going to cut this out from um, the outside. I'm going to cut it out from the inside, and I am going to put holes in the new piece and weld it from the inside, just because we don't want to cut through a 14 gauge 10 times. Um, the two holes where a little suspension cover was sitting, Make sure you mark them some kind of way. Get a little Sharpie, right hole, check mark, anything that makes sense to you. So when you go to weld on the new patch, um, you don't weld up these holes that you need for the bolts later. Now if you get a spot weld and you cut it perfectly in the center, it'll actually separate from the piece. So you can see how none of these are actually attached. Then some that are offset, like this one, um, I didn't cut it directly in the center. What I'm gonna do is get my wedge and hammer it out. Uh, also with these ones on the top, there might be another spot weld hiding up here, I'm not sure, but we'll find that with the wedge. So here's my hammer, here's the wedge that I'm going to use. Um, you can use an air hammer with a wedge attachment to it, that works too, but I find that um, there's too much power in the air hammer and you can actually ripple and fold steel you're trying to keep. So I'm going to start wedging this and see if I find any new spot welds I need to cut out. What I learned there is that I didn't miss any spot welds. I just didn't have it completely centered on the spot weld when I cut it. No big deal, a nice sharp chisel will eat right through that. Now I'm gonna chisel a couple areas right here because it looks like I didn't get it dead on either. There we go. You can see that. Yep, just a little rust uh, right there on the corner that was holding me down. Radiator support's loose. Now we're just basically going to do the same thing on all the other spot well holes. Okay, now that we got the piece off, I'm gonna go around all the inside and the outside of all the edges that we're gonna to weld to and everything that we just cut through and grind it with my angle grinder, make sure it's nice and clean metal, make sure there's no burrs, so we actually go to put our new piece on. So we go to put our new piece on, it's not sitting on top of a burr or a nasty cut, so make sure you clean all the edges up really well so we can have good welds. And here's the part where, if you're a beginner, it's gonna be a little more difficult. You have to set your panel up in there and test fit it. These, these replacement panels 
never just perfectly fit as soon as you sit it in. It never works that way. Um, so I set mine in. Um, first thing I found out is that these edges aren't 90 enough. They're over 90. So I'm gonna beat those down with a hammer and dolly. And the only thing I really recommend at this point is to get a cheap hammer and dolly set if you don't already have one. It'll actually go a long ways. Because if I start, I start hitting this, I don't want um, creases or mars where you can actually see it when the car is put together. Um, since this is something you can actually see underneath the hood, so I'm going to have my dolly behind it the whole time I'm actually um, trying to correct that bend. So my dolly here has a 90 degree edge on it. That's what I'm going to use to get the perfect 90. So I'm going to set it down and hammer it flat onto itself. Uh, I'm going to use a slapper. I like slappers uh, personally. That's kind of a, just a, a personal choice. But you can also use, use a good old um, body hammer. Okay, so what I've done off camera was drill holes here in the bottom. That's gonna be our spot weld holes on the 14 gauge we didn't wanna cut through. Then I cleaned off all the edges that we're going to weld to right here. Then here on the bottom, that's what I'm gonna weld. I'm gonna weld from underneath, um, kinda of hide everything. There's really no uh, measurement to how far you wanna cut these. It's not that scientific. Just make them look somewhat nice in case anyone notices them. Um, so now what we're going to do is actually fit it in for the final time and I can guarantee you it's not going to just fit right in we're going to have to hammer and dolly some stuff we have to bend a little bit but uh, most importantly we want to keep our measurements that we had from earlier so I'm going to move some of my tools and get a bunch of C-clips and get it in the right spot but not completely where it's going to be but once the measurement's good I can put a couple tacks on it then I can start hammering it into place Okay, so on the front here, we have this hole that the fender of bolt actually goes through. So I like to basically line that hole up and get my C-clip on here. Okay, and now what we're working with is the back and forth back here. Since this overlaps, we actually have room to play right here. We don't have room to play with where the holes line up. So I'm gonna get my measuring tape out. I'm going to crimp it down to where the measurement's right, both directions. Once I get those measurements right, then I'm going to start beating it in place. And if you're like me, you don't have any idea where you set down your measuring tape. So, let's see what my measurement is right here, I wrote down. sucks I'm going over that high spot right there but we'll get that in. It's gonna go in quite a bit. That's roughly where it's gonna go. There's gonna be a lot more moving around so okay. E <laughs> Push it in with my knee. Okay, I got a clip. Double check my measurement. Okay, I'm just a hair away from where I want to be. Gotta nudge it just a hair. Okay. Okay, that measurement's right. Apron, apron.
double check it, that's good. The back and forth is good. Now we just need to get everything to sit down, sit down in the right spot. So since, so since I have it in the right spot measurement wise, except for this needs to come in, I'm gonna go ahead and do a rosette weld. I'm gonna go ahead and do a spot weld right here in the corner. That's gonna allow this to come in and out still, but it's not going to allow it to shift on my front piece. I'm gonna go right here, right here, kind of towards the middle, so I can bring this top lip over. This lip is kind of bent a little awkward, so we're gonna fix that with a hammer and dolly. To do is hammer and dolly around the weld. You can't hammer and dolly air. It's just gonna flex back into the spot. The weld is actual contact point and we actually pull things together from the outside of the weld. So so that hug that in. And I might just need to put a little pressure on it a tiny bit when I'm welding the next one down. It's all about slowly working your way around. And I won't dive into welding basics. Just take your time. Something that some people aren't are going to be afraid to tell you. Um, don't be afraid to use self tappers. My bottom piece is flared out a little bit, and to get a better handle on it, I'm actually going to self tap it into the steel and it's going to pull it in. And I can spot weld around the self tapper, making it a lot easier on myself. Okay, so after you get all your spot welds finished up, you got the piece hammered down in place and it's fitting nice, all your welds are done. The last two steps 
is to grind down your spot welds to what you think looks nice uh, or looks good enough for whatever paint job you're going to do to the car. Um, I grind mine down with 36 grit. Uh, then I use an orbital sander at 80 grit. Then I use an orbital sander at 220 grit. And that's about uh, get, gets rid of all the scratches so I can paint this later and it not look terrible. Alright, so that completes it for this part of the Mustang repair. We have a lot more sheet metal to go through. So if you'd like to see more videos, uh, please like, subscribe. If you have any questions, shoot them down in the comment section. Thank you for watching.